Hey, it's Hirsch, and welcome to the complete guide to my OC universe, Shard. In this video, I'm going to be explaining all the lore and world building that went into creating this world, which includes the power and magic system, the royals, the celestials, and tidbits on how I created this world in general and my process. So starting off, I wanted to do a quick little recap of all the significant characters in the story so far, but I do have character videos in my OC playlist that gives a more in-depth description of each of the characters by themselves and their backstory and personality and everything, so feel free to check them out afterwards, I will be linking the playlist in the description. Anyways, to start the character recap, Maya and Kai are the main characters of my OC universe and they are 16 years old. Maya is a shadow manipulator and Kai is a light manipulator. Next up, we have Ace, who's also a very important character to the story, and he is 17 years old and a shadow manipulator. Next up, we have Rue, who is Kai's girlfriend, and she is 16 years old and a light manipulator. Following that, we have Rowan, who is actually the first OC that I created for this universe. He's 16 years old and a shadow manipulator. And finally, the last two characters who are the most recent that I've created are Ash and Daphne. Ash is 16 years old and a shadow manipulator, and Daphne is 17 years old and a light manipulator. So all of these characters currently attend Nexus Academy, which is one of the most prestigious universities for aura manipulators in this nation, and they are all first years when the story currently starts, and I think I'm gonna start it out where they're all doing like the entrance exams for like the first couple of episodes. And basically the story revolves around Maya who has a dormant chart, aka it doesn't work and it just sort of spells from there and also shares a bit of Ace's story and everyone else's. It's very like fantasy themed, a bit of romance, and a bit of slice of life and it just kind of goes from there. And so for some general facts, the powers have existed in this world for almost as long as the people, but no one but the royal family knows anything about their origin except for that they came from the three celestials, which we'll discuss later. Everyone in this universe is a manipulator, but there's that their strengths depend on their own physical and mental capabilities, such as in this like in our own world, like people are like some are better at more creative things and others are better at more physical activities like sports. So the powers are equal to each other's, uh, for example, light and shadow manipulation are always equal to each other, and there is always an equal number of light and shadow manipulators in the world, since that's just how the world maintains its balance. And manipulators are basically just humans but with powers, and they have the same lifespan, the same physical capabilities when they're untrained, but with training, their health and physique can improve, and so can their physical capabilities or fighting capabilities. And now we're going to be talking about the magic powers, and there's gonna be a lot, so hang in there. Starting off, all manipulators have these gems called shards on their back of their neck which indicate what they are able to control. Usually, manipulators' gems remain dormant or dim until their power awakens which happens during childhood, and when they're actively using their powers, the gem can glow, and other parts of their bodies could glow as well, but it changes from person to person, like for example, your eyes could glow or your hands could glow, it really just depends. And also, those who are awakened at a like, very younger age, and by awakened, I just mean they get their powers, it is very common for those who get their powers at a very younger age to use a channeling tool or assistance to help them control their power. For example, my OC Rowan usually uses a dagger and an earring to control his powers or else it just gets out of control and it can be a lot for a kid to handle by themselves especially if they don't have like proper mentors or teaching at that time and there can also be other tools that they can use like books scepters and even jewelry like earrings or rings which is what Rowan's to use now to talk more about the manipulation powers in, in specific so the first manipulation power is light manipulation or light auras and basically this is the ability to control light energy or particles this includes creating light energy from surrounding things that already contain it or simply bending or changing the perception of the light that is already there light manipulators have a white or like a pale yellow shard on the back of their neck that indicates their ability to manipulate light which is how you can tell that they're a light manipulator and now i'm going to be talking about the abilities that each level of this manipulator can do so for lower powered manipulators or kids who just got awakened they can absorb or release light pretty easily since it's very natural they can release it in the form of waves waves, beams, etc, but it won't actually deal with that much damage unless they're trained on how to condense the light energy into solid attacks or st stuff like that. They can also manipulate the color on certain objects so they can change the color of any non-living object. Following that, mid-powered manipulators or teenagers can control the clarity of objects or someone's vision, so for example they can make things appear more blurry or out of focus, and if this power gets like powerful and trained enough, it can actually turn someone blind, which is why a lot of people don't usually go this route. Furthermore, they can create holographic images or projections on a smaller scale. They can also heal others, and this is only in areas where light is already available, so for example in your, if you're in like a super pitch black cave, you can't heal others because there is no light available to help you heal that person. And finally, they can also create a shield using a strong number of photon packets. Finally, high-powered manipulators or manipulators who have been training for quite a while can manipulate the color of anything, whether it be living or non-living, so they can also use illusions on themselves and like create disguises without using other objects. 
It can also create full-on illusions by using an advanced skill of projections, color manipulation, etc. And some people can use this to like make clones for example. They can also turn invisible by shifting the light particles surrounding their bodies. And they can move at the speed of light or go through some objects or walls usually at school or at least at nexus high um they can choose between going the healer route or the combat route or the illusion route and will learn to hone their abilities based on that decision so it just depends on whatever you're interested in you're like not automatically placed in something or whatever it's purely interest based Moving on to the second type of manipulation, which is shadow manipulation or having a shadow aura. This is basically the ability to control or manipulate darkness or shadows. And in this world, darkness is just seen as an equivalent of light as a substance instead of just seen as the absence of light like it is in this world. So this can include creating shields, objects, or again, just manipulating pre-existing shadows. And shadow manipulators often have dark blue or purple shards on the back of their necks that indicate their ability to bend darkness. So again, like I did with the light manipulators, I'm just going to be talking about the skill level for each of them and what powers they can do at that skill level. So for the lower powered shadow manipulators or the kids, they can obviously absorb and release darkness, similar to the light one, it really won't do much, but cast a slightly dark veil unless they learn how to channel their attacks into actual solid like things. They can also cloud everything in darkness, which is often called a shadow cloud, except kids do this especially if they're having like a temper tantrum or if they're having very high emotions caused by stress, but it can also be used in a combative way, I guess. And finally, all shadow manipulators inherently have night vision, which is basically the ability to see during night or in darker areas or spaces, which is pretty cool. Moving on to the mid-powered aura manipulators or teens, you can drown everything in complete darkness or absorb light in a small area so that it's completely dark. And while this won't actually like take the light out of that area, it just casts like a veil over it, but this will be really dark so light manipulators in that area can't use the light that's there because shadow manipulators already cast their particles over it, if that makes sense. You can also create or dispel shields and veils. These just prevent people or objects from entering, so technically a shield on a bigger scale. And the power of these shields or veils just depends on the power and how much training went into it. They can also create small objects, and unlike light objects, these are actually tangible, so you can create weapons or something, and the more practice that you have, the more bigger and long-lasting the objects will be. And finally, you can also create a being of shadow or a clone, similar to how light manipulators can do it using illusions. However, unlike light manipulators, these clones will not look like actual people. They're more over just resemble shadows, but like in a person shape and obviously 3D or whatever. So it can't really be used as a clone per se, but it can be used as like a stand-in or like, I don't know, a silhouette or whatever. And moving on to higher powered manipulators, they can do shadow puppetry, which is generally frowned upon in society. It's basically just infusing the shadow of the user with the shadow of the target, but it can only be done through um, physical contact, just how you initiate it. And basically this allows the user of the shadow manipulation to control the target through their own shadow. They can also shadow travel which can, is basically like melting their own body into the shadows and they can go any other area where the shadows already exist. And finally they can open a pocket dimension or a realm. Every shadow manipulator can eventually access their own pocket dimension but can take decades of practice and in this they can store important objects, even go in there themselves to hide, but it can only be opened and closed by themselves so it's a really good storage place for important things. And it could also possibly be used as a prison, but we don't talk about that. At school, kids can choose between going the fabricating route, the combative route, or the neutral route, which teaches them a little bit of everything since the shadow manipulation is so vast in comparison to light manipulation. And they also can't heal themselves, so they don't have that option unlike light manipulators. Anyways, that's all you have to know about the powers for now and their capabilities, and now we're going to be moving on to the origin of how these powers actually came to be. So these powers originated from the three celestial beings or gods, Celeste, Enid, and Iris. Enid is the god of sunlight and light manipulation, Iris is the celestial or god of moonlight and shadow manipulation, and Celeste is the celestial of starlight or space manipulation. And only the royal family has the ability to manipulate starlight particles or space particles and this is a trait that is passed down from generation to generation and they're able to manipulate the energy from the space itself that can be seen as empty or blank and they do also have a couple of other secrets and in terms of what they're able to manipulate but I'll, I won't be revealing that for now since it is pretty important to the story so now let's talk a bit about the royal family because we're already on that topic and they are an interesting bunch 
So the royal family are also known as the descendants of Nova, and Nova is the name of a human who is chosen by Celeste, who, like I said before, is the celestial of starlight and space manipulation, but she also has the ability to see into the future sometimes, but it's not by choice, like, it just randomly happens. And no one really knows why Nova was chosen in specific, but the sages assume that Celeste saw something in the far future that would benefit the population, or the gods, or the celestials, if she had granted the ability to manipulate starlight to Nova's bloodline only. Therefore, every child born into this royal family had the birthright and the ability to manipulate starlight. The royal family doesn't actually have much power in the governing or ruling system, there is a government that deals with all of that, but the royal family is deemed the highest power and has the ability to veto any decision by them if all five representatives from the family agree, and they're just called royals because of their generational wealth and the fact that they live in a literal castle and have the gift of starlight, but other than that, they don't actually hold that much importance to society and they don't like contribute to making the rules or anything, like, that's just the government system. Anyways, that is basically like all the world building information and I am sorry for like dumping all that on you. I was trying to make this video longer, but I also didn't want to drag it out too much. So now I do want to talk a bit about the process of how this world came to be. So creating this OC universe was quite a journey. It started in like late 2022, maybe in like November, or December when I first created the character designs for Maya and Kai, who were the main characters of my OC universe like I mentioned before, and at that time they looked really different, like they had a full head of silver hair, which I guess they also do in this world, but I won't reveal too much. Also, I won't talk too much about how I developed the plot itself because I want to make a separate video on how I created all these characters and the lore regarding them and the backstories, so I want to make like a full process video for that, so stay tuned. And anyways, originally this universe wasn't even a magical one, like it was just meant to be a regular like modern society based universe with like a slice of life sort of story, but then the celestial still existed during that time. And anyways, then I rewrote the entire story and gave the characters magic powers so that they could like actually have more control over their world and their lives. And the celestial didn't actually come back into the story until like recently like a month ago maybe but i was thinking about how the story would like come full circle in the end and the final goal for my characters so i decided to include the celestials into the story again and by the way in case i didn't make this clear earlier the celestials are the gods they can just be called either they're just like synonyms i guess Anyways, now to talk a bit about the art, now that the video is coming to a close, I wanted to quickly talk about the drawing that I'm actually doing. So the idea was to create a manga cover of sorts, or like a webcomic cover, because I am planning on making this story into a webtoon one day, fingers crossed, or at least that's the goal, because I would love to share this like full story with you guys, and I already have a lot of it scripted and everything. Anyways, the person in the front right is Ace, and the girl towards the back is Maya, who, like I said before, is the main character. And the story does mainly focus on them and their character development, so I wanted to include them in this drawing as the main focus. I was considering doing like a group drawing with the whole gig, but guys, I literally did not have the energy for that, especially since, now I, since I developed Ash and Daphne's design, I would have just felt the need to include them as well, and finding a pose for all of them in one singular page would have been actually so annoying, so I'm just going to be doing these two for now, but I really do want to do maybe like a digital drawing of the entire group later on. Anyways, I admit, I went in using alcohol markers for like all the coloring, and then I used acrylic paint pens for the background from Ardex, and I just did like a light blue sky color, and then I added some clouds using white later on. Then at the very end, I went ahead and I re-outlined everything in case some parts got colored over and at the very top, I included the title or like the little logo name of my OC universe, which is Shard. And while I was sketching, I had the, like the brilliant idea to make the A in Shard look like a Shard Stone, which is where everyone gets their powers from. And I think it's a really cute idea. I don't know if I'll actually keep it or not, but I think it's cute, so I'm keeping it for now. Anyways, I would love to make a digital version of this cover, and who knows, maybe the day that I actually make this into a webcomic, I'll be able to use this cover as like the first season cover. So far, I have like most of the story scripted out. I have the beginning and end like very clearly signified, but I just need to figure out the middle bit, and if I'm planning on extending the story by adding a season 4, or if I'm just gonna keep it like 3 seasons, or like 3 books, or like segments, or arcs I guess, I don't know what to call them yet. Um, but yeah. Anyways, as always, thank you guys so much for watching till the end. This video literally took forever to make and there were so many obstacles that I faced. Like first off, it took forever to script this video so I had to like go back and edit the script so many times so that I was sure that I included all the information that I wanted to because this is like that one video where you just have to include everything about the world in one singular video and I can't go back and add more. And anyways, after that, I also am sick right now, so my voice doesn't sound the best, but I hope you guys don't mind. And I was, I was also hit with art block a week ago, so drawing for this video was also hard, but we prevail, and now I finally have this video out. 
Anyways, I'm so glad that so many of you are invested in my story. I literally love sharing these little OC stories with you guys. So definitely stay tuned for more OC content soon. I'll probably be doing Daphne and Ash's character profile video next and then designing all the side characters or like extras. But yeah, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.